the grand sport. This is the grand sport. Uh, we're, gonna, I, we're gonna spend a lot of time talking about yeah. the handling and the suspension of the grand sport because that's really what this car is all about. Yeah, so I'd like to start off with the tires. These things are massive. We got 335s in the back, 285s in the front. That is wider than the back tires on my CTSV. Yeah. The front tires. And in order to fit those tires on there, there's a 12 inch rim in the back. They're 20 inch wheels. There's a 12 inch rim in the back. So 12 they're, inches deep? Yeah. Okay. 12 inch wide wheels, uh, 20 inch diameter, 10 inch um, wide up front. So this thing is meant to handle. The wheels are also specific to the Grand Sport. So you can't get those on the Z06. You can't get those on the base or the ZR1. Those are Grand Sport wheels. We don't, we don't have any issues, but these wheels, uh, when the Grand Sport was first coming out, you can actually read Motor Trend's review on it. They had a lot of issues with cracking. With cracking and whatnot. With cracking, for so. sure. The other thing with these, since we're talking about the wheels, is the brakes. Yeah, so we got, obviously these look like four pistons. Pretty sure there's six pistons up there. Yeah, both 14 inch rotor, front and back. Okay. And uh, yeah, like you said, they're Brembo, all four corners, six piston up front. So some fun facts about this, is this car from 70 to zero can stop in 136 feet, guys. So that is equal to a McLaren Senna, as well as a Ferrari LaFerrari. That's pretty wild, right? Another thing that you can tell people about your brakes is if someone asks you, why the heck aren't they drilled rotors, right? Yeah. People think of uh, slotted and drilled rotors as being the performance, either that or carbon ceramic. Race car. Yeah, race car stuff. So these are just iron rotors and they have that crazy braking performance. The reason they're not drilled is that came straight from the Corvette racing team. When they were doing their R&D, their yeah. research and development on it, they found that they were getting cracks in the, uh, the drilled portion of the rotors. So they did away with that, but they needed some sort of area for the gases to escape under all that heat and under all that friction. Yeah. So that's why they're slotted. This thing is made to corner on those sticky uh, Pilot Sports, and it's made to stop with those the four corners of Brembo's. I find this interesting. I read an article from Motor Trend in 2016 where it had like the top best braking cars they've ever tested. Like this list was like insane cars. Like you mentioned, this was like, uh, obviously the Senna wasn't out yet. The 918 was on there. Uh, I think 918 was number two on the list. The Corvette, Stingray C7 was number one on the list next to all these like like the Bugatti Veyron was on the list and the Corvette C7 Stingray was ahead of it and it started at like what 49 grand 48 right. grand yep yep and, and the Grand Sport it's not <coughs> only the fact that it can uh, accelerate in under four seconds yeah. to 60 and it can stop in these insane amounts but it can corner as well yeah so for the suspension it has the uh the magna ride the magnetic ride control yeah gm's been doing that forever they have been it actually started back in 2002 they put it on the cadillac sts first that's right so you would have thought it's gonna this is gonna be a luxury thing yeah. right the next year it went into the c5 yep and it, it's a really it's actually a simple system obviously there's some crazy engineering there you got tubes that have this magnetic property in it and uh, some cables that go to a computer you turn a dial that changes the uh, the property and density of that magnetic uh, compound that's in there yeah which can stiffen it up or loosen it so right there it, it's just simple and there's no small parts involved like normal suspension a bunch of little moving components uh, so the durability and reliability of it's pretty solid as well i watched uh, uh rob dom's video he has a video talking about a ctsv that has the magna ride and he said that uh, he broke one apart to see what it was about under a ton of compression exploded everywhere just like super dark brown like die right <laughs> just covered everything yeah it took them like a week to clean up or something for sure yeah it's crazy stuff and then the rest of the suspension it's actually pretty similar to the predecessor the c6 yeah it's and got a leaf spring in the back yeah even at the c5 is when we started seeing that there's a, a fiberglass transverse leaf spring okay right and that uh goes just with the axle across the back of the car this isn't like a truck that it's going with the length of the car it's going across the car and then in the front we have a uh, different size double wishbones um, so that's it it's, it's a simple proven suspension setup 
that works good. Around the Nurburgring, just continuing to kind of talk about the handling capabilities of the Grand Sport, there was no released uh, track times on the Nurburgring and it's actually some pretty fun stories. You can go in and read the articles of the uh, who Corvette uses for the, uh, the, the the driver. Yeah. Like all the, the Corvettes is driven by the same guy and he wasn't even a professional race car driver which is just an interesting fact. Um, but he, they, they crashed a couple cars and maybe it's because he wasn't a professional race car driver but whatever. Could be part um, of it. Could be part of it. They, the, the Grand Sport I, I think they got a time in the manual, if I'm remembering the story correctly, but they didn't release it because the, uh, what's the camera called? The GoPro? No, it's in the oh, car. Oh, PDR. Yeah, the PDR. Performance data recorder. Yeah, the performance data recorder in the car is what they were using to record the lap time. Okay. It, it's, it froze for a length of time. So if Corvette or if Chevrolet is releasing the information on their car, they're obviously not going to put that yeah. out. And they couldn't do another lap because of the scheduling at the ring and all this other crap. But anyways, the time they put down was like 7.27 or something like that. It's pretty good time. And just to put that into uh, the context, here's two other things. The Z06 that they got around the track was one when they were experimenting with the 100 octane. Okay. Um, so they didn't want to release that because it wasn't a factory thing, but that was at like 706 or something like that. So quite a bit faster than the Grand Sport. About 20 it's seconds. Got, yeah, it's got a lot more power, obviously. But what yeah, I, and the Nurburgring has a lot of very long straights. So, right, right. So, so that, that power is going to yep. take over for sure. What I thought was interesting is the C8, right? The new Corvette engine in the back, handles amazing, supercar stuff. Yeah. It's only two seconds, the C7 Grand Sport's only two seconds behind the lap time that the C8 put down. That is a very close lap. I thought that was pretty cool. One of the last things we'll talk about with the handling on the Grand Sport, which is a fun, awesome technology, is the rear differential. Okay. Right? Yeah. So it's an electronic rear differential, which means it can be both open and closed. So when you're going into corners, the, uh, the, the, the differential can open. So it, it, it's kind of wild. Using uh, just a pump, some hydraulic hoses, uh, that little differential's got this like band of clutching, clutch material. It's like almost yeah. a belt, like a flexible belt, right? Yeah. That goes around it and it can be open and loose. Or, so when you're going into quarters, it opens. And when you get onto the throttle, uh, the pump pushes, pushes hydraulic fluid against these itty bitty pistons and it tightens up that band. So then you have a, a locked rear end. So both tires can put all that V8 American muscle power down. That's right? a really, that's some cool tech. And you, it has to stay cool, right? Yeah. So the back end of this car is gnarly. So you got airflow coming in and then uh, the airflow passes by the electronic differential over on the driver's side, right? And that airflow can pass through and the heat extraction for that actually comes out uh, just below the tail light. And on the other side, right? Cause you have to have something cool over here. It's the same thing. You got air that comes in and then you got air that comes out and you actually have the heat extraction. And on this side, that's for the transmission cooling. So we tried to pick this up on video. It's not the greatest of videos. As you can see, the airflow shoots in and it shoots right out the bottom. It's pretty cool. And also, uh, guys, we're gonna have this up on our lift in a future video to show the things we're talking about from the underside. If you haven't had the opportunity to see that, make sure you subscribe and check out the future video on the C7. Another cool thing you can tell people at car shows, the whole back window is made of Corvette logos. They did that on the C8 as well. Just a cool fun fact. A lot of sports cars nowadays are either like all carbon fiber or going all aluminum type of deal. Corvette's sticking to its roots. We do have a carbon fiber hood on the Grand Sport, but a majority of the rest of the car yeah. is still kind of what it's been for quite some time. And that's just a fiberglass composite. Obviously it, they have it figured out. They know yeah. what they're doing with the material, but there's some pretty cool other materials as well. There's uh, an aero gel, Whoa. which is the, it's the same material that's used in space suits for NASA, right? Really? It's known as the lightest material in the world, I think I read. And uh, th they use that in the, uh, the, the drive shaft tunnel and the, the transmission the tunnel. Yeah, and they do that to keep it cooler on the inside. 
You okay. know, you want yeah. all that heat that's generated, yeah. obviously that's right underneath you. You want to keep it nice and cool and comfortable in the Corvette so they use this material to do that. Oh, that's really cool. Like a normal drive shaft, the whole inside of it is actually cardboard. The chassis is constructed from a hydroformed aluminum, so it does have an aluminum uh, chassis. Back in the day, it was only the Z06 got an aluminum chassis and the C6. Yeah. Remember that? So the C6, Z06 had an aluminum chassis. The Grand Sport was on the steel. So now the C7 has that aluminum chassis. Does the Stingray have an aluminum I'm as pretty well? sure that's just, yeah, across the board. Okay. I know as a car enthusiast, I always personally like to have something that's a little unique, something that you can say, well, yeah, mine's the only one of this or the only one of that. Well, this is the only one of this. In this parking lot right now. Yeah. Right? So the Corvette is obviously a mass produced car. It's built on the assembly line. We've been to that plant down in Bowling Green, Kentucky. It we have. Exists. Cool right. place. Yeah, it is cool. Um, the C7 Grand Sport, 17 to 19 were the model years, right? And um, there's about 22, 23,000 of the coupes that were made, 27,000 Grand Sports altogether. The remainder would have been cor or, uh, convertibles, obviously. Yeah. Uh, the fun fact about this one, throughout the entire span of the C7, which would be 14 to 19 model years, the Admiral Blue is only on about two and a half percent Ooh. of the over like 200,000 C7s that were produced. Rare, very rare. Super rare, Admiral. The only two rare Corvettes I can really think of are like the ZR1 variants, yeah. the C4, the C6, and the C7 and as well as the C6 427. That was pretty... Yeah, there's a couple other little trim things here and there. Oh, the, like um, the Carbon 65 Z06. That's yep, a rare one. Yep, but like the actual like model, or I guess they it is technically trim, isn't it? Yeah, I... I C6 427 is kind of the one that's been on my bucket list. Let me, let me correct. I said Carbon 65 Z06. You can get a Grand Sport too. Yeah, you can for sure. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to the video here on Performance on Wheels. I had a lot of fun making this one, uh, and I'm looking forward to the future videos we will be making on the C7, as well as all the other cars on our channel. I would like to say that only 2.7% of you guys are subscribed to our channel. Out of all the views we've ever had, only 2.7. So scroll down, hit like, hit the subscribe button, that way we can grow as a channel. I mean, come on, 2.7%, yeah. come on. We're just a father and son out yeah. having a good time. We'd love your guys' support if you're willing to do that. Look forward to seeing you in a future video. Have a great day.